So in this video, I want to introduce you to successive transformations, which really just means doing one transformation after another, okay? And realizing the order in which you are doing this. So let's say uh, we have uh, a few matrices. So let's say that A is uh, a rotation and B is uh, a shear and C is a reflection. Okay, and I want to do um, the rotation first, then B, then C. Okay, so how do I do that with matrices? So it's important that in order to do that, you understand that the matrix would be the product where you have the A coming first, goes over to the right, then B, then C. OK, so you do it in this order. OK, so each successive transformation appears to the left of the preceding ones. OK, so um, a case in point for that. OK, so let's say you've got uh, two transformations. So let's say we've got matrix uh, P. And that's going to have A, B, C, and D. And we're going to have the matrix Q, which is going to be E, F, G, H. OK? So let's say I've got uh, a pair of coordinates. So this might be the corner of my rectangle that I keep on using in my examples, or a corner of another shape. OK? And we're going to call those coordinates X, Y. OK, now after I have applied, so let's say I'm going to apply uh, and do P, then Q, OK? And we're going to see if we get the same result, OK? So if I'm going to do P, then Q, I'm going to do P first. So A, B, C, D, multiplying with the X, Y. So what do I get? I get A times X plus B times Y. And then I've got C times X plus D times Y. OK, so having applied P, these are my new coordinates Okay, for this point. So this point has been mapped to these coordinates here, effectively. Then I'm going to apply Q. So if I apply Q, I've got E, F, G, H being applied to A, X plus B, Y, C, X plus D, Y. So I've got E being applied to A, X plus B, Y, so I'll multiply by that. So I'll have A, E, X plus B, E, Y. Uh, then I've got plus C, F, X just keeping everything in alphabetical order, and uh, DFY. Then I've got GH multiplied by each of these, so AGX plus BGY uh, plus uh, CHX and DHY. So these would be my new coordinates um, after this Q transformation, OK? So if instead, if instead I had just worked out the matrix um, QP, then that's E, F, G, H multiplying with A, B, C, D. So EF times AC, so AE plus uh, F, or CF, rather. EF times BD, so BE plus DF. GH times AC, so AG plus CH. 
and GH times BD, so BG plus DH. So if I now just apply this matrix to the original coordinates, what I should end up with is precisely that. So AE plus CF, AG plus CH, BE plus DF, BG plus DH, multiplied by my original coordinates. If I end up with the same thing, then it is clear that doing P then Q as an order of transformations is the same as doing QP. Okay, and that means that this is the correct order for that to happen. And that's how in general we can do this. So we've got AE plus CF multiplied by the X. So that would be AEX plus CFX. And then BE plus DF multiplying with the Y. So plus BEY plus DFY. And you can see that that is precisely what I've got in the top row there. And then AG plus CH times X, so AGX plus CHX, plus BG plus DH times the Y. And these two, as you can see, are the same. So applying matrix P to the original coordinates and then applying matrix Q gives me the same result as applying QP. OK, and so that shows you that with successive transformations, as you keep on including another transformation, they get added on to the left hand side.